Thank you. Welcome to my talk. Let's start the timer. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, Puffy presenting a video conferencing uh, solution that is called Chitsi, and it will run on OpenBSD. Um, there will be a lot of content, so I hope you are not too hungry and rushing for, for the lunch. Uh, so <laughs> bear with me. Uh, before we go on with this short URL or the QR code, this is resolving to that short URL. There you can um, clone the Git repository with the presentation or directly download a PDF. I've seen the PDF is cutting off some of the pfconf um, ASCII output. Uh, I don't know how to fix it because it's just an Im uh, integrated PDF exporter into this presentation solution, so who knows. Um, a lot of uh, topics to go through, and um, I am doing this. I got this question already on multiple virtual machines, just to prove the point that um, it is possible to run the, the core components of Jitsi isolated for a later scale out, and also to have it uh, compartmentalized uh, for security reasons, performance reasons, however you want to put it. But just to show that there is no secret connections or discoveries within the, the components of uh, Jitsi and the other parts in it. And we have a live demo. Uh, so have your phones or laptops or whatever ready. So who is running a Jitsi server in here? Okay, that's two, two and a half. <laughs> Who is running it on OpenBSD? No one. And who tried to get the Jitsi server running on whatever uh, operating system? Okay. okay, that's the the two that had uh, success. So you did didn't even try because looking at it and thinking about the uh, example configurations. Uh, you're getting a lot of uh, components. If you are looking at the official uh, Jitsi documentation, you get an architecture overview with maybe 12, 14 moving, uh, moving boxes. Um, I have not uh, found one single firewall configuration example or something like that, but if you are looking at all the components, every component has two or three ports to be uh, communicated with, so you might have uh, to open them in a firewall, but on which side is that internal communication, is that external or whatever, so uh, that's that part. The next one is uh, this nice, oh, do we have a laser pointer? No. Uh, the part here with location, that is Nginx configuration, and this is not a swear word for me. This is from the official documentation. You should have location matches like this one, who is, uh, yeah, well, extended regex. And what does, it, what does it do? What's, what, what's it good for? Where's the fucking magic? Because usually the, the next line is rewrite to slash break. Like, okay, do nothing and go home. Why this complex matching? <clears throat> so you might reach out and want to have help. So you land up in community Jitsi org or something like that. And no matter what you are writing there and asking questions, the most likely answer you will get at first is use the quick install, which is one single Debian VM with all the components in one place, and then hopefully it works. And if it doesn't work, try again. <laughs> Restart over. Oh, and nowadays we would have a Docker solution. That should work on the first try. It doesn't, but it should. And if you are digging a bit later, we have all two components uh, are running um, uh, Java virtual machines. The one may be on 1.8 for old performance reasons. Uh, so they had optimized for Java 8 and the other component is running on Java 11. Nowadays, the kind of problem you could run into is um, the co component optimized for 1.8 has a dependency if you're compiling it yourself that requires uh, Java 11 and you cannot run Java 11 compiled code with 1.8. So there goes your performance optimization. With all the um, 
FQDNs we, we will see later on, uh, you might figure out, uh, yeah, well, I am, should have DNS entries for all of those and pointing to which IP address, is that an internal one, is that an external one? Might it conflict with something else? You don't know. And the bottom line is uh, most people just throw in the towel or they launch it so it can land somewhere else in some other place and go to Zoom or what was the other ugly thing? Teams? <laughs> Yeah, go to, or you go to Meet Jitsi, and I think that's maybe the selling point there. So it's looking really complicated, and it is not. After you have found out how it works, and I will show that, you will see that it's rather straightforward if you would document it properly. On the OpenBSD side, so you, there are some components that really have to run on Linux, but most of the components run just easily on OpenBSD, so that's not needed. One part is the, the video recording. Um, I'll come into that on one of the last pages. How is uh, VM, uh, VMM configuration working and all that? What networking uh, connections do I need between the VMs and the outside world? Um, and how can I scale out or do I have uh, to stay in the vicinity for reasons like network latency or, or similar stuff? But uh, I can uh, already say each component can be run wherever you want. Um, there is no some something like uh, you have to have those few components really nearby or something like that. That's not needed. Uh, and on OpenBSD, uh, Java and RCCTL is not a topic um, done very often. There is some examples with Tomcat and I think Minecraft server, uh, but we found a bit an easier solution how to make uh, Java being run properly with RCCTL and RCConf Flex and all that, so that's solved as well. And then, yeah, how about not installing all this stuff in configuration from hell. So could, couldn't we just have package at Jitsi mm -hmm. and go ahead and it's coming, you will see that. Uh, just for reference, uh, I, I guess we can more or less skip that. So we have the kernel components, the user land daemon for VMM, VMCTL and its configuration page. I think that's common knowledge in here. On the Jitsi side, we have four components that are at play here um, to run a basic conference. You can add more components for uh, the more complicated uh, features of Jitsi, but just to have a simple video conference with a built-in chat and something like raising arms and screen sharing, four components are totally enough. The first one is a web server. We are using Nginx. It should be easily possible to do it with the uh, unspoken patchy thing server. <laughs> uh, and I have been asked about open HTTPD in RelayD. Uh, it should work, but it's really a lot of um, work and testing required to do that because uh, you have one component, uh, uh, one part of the communication had to, uh, has to be run through RelayD. And the other part, like delivering the, the web assets, uh, would come from open HTTPD, and um, the, the other requested paths must be ignored and all that. So it's possible, likely possible, but okay. It's easier with Nginx. Uh, we have a Prosody server um, for running the XMTP protocols, so all the internal Jitsi communication about, hey, who is a component uh, involved in this conference and all that, that it's all steered via XMTP. And uh, most likely and easiest um, server for that is Prosody, feature complete and, and all that, so that's good. Any other one might work, depends on what um, features are implemented. And for the, for the very core part, we have Jaikofo, that's the Jitsi conference focus server. Uh, that's more or less the, really the, the core steering committee, so to say, um, so that the 
Jitsi part of things knows there are these and that conference rooms, uh, this and that screen sharing is going on, and I have uh, ex uh, especially what video bridges do I have available to, uh, to pass on the video stream. So you have a selective forwarding unit in the Java bridge and the Jitsi video bridge, JVB, or I sometimes call it Vibri. <laughs> Uh, just so you don't get confused when I'm saying Vibri, I mean JVB, but I s try to stay on JVB because that's more or less the official name. So that's doing the, the WebRTC, the video stream handling. And this one uh, then gets controlled by Tchaikovsky to say this video stream has to go to this participant or the screen sharing goes there and these and those are uh, to be connected uh, for their particular conference. And there's a component uh, I'm not fully presenting here, it's just more like an outlook, that's uh, the Jitsi broadcasting infrastructure, that is to record streams, uh, or doing a directly breakout into YouTube streaming. And it's really YouTube only for now. Uh, the Jitsi people said, this for now uh, is, I think, like two years now, or maybe three. So it's really hard-coded YouTube. You cannot just say, oh, I have a WebRTC here, because it's a combined stream after all. And this uh, right now is only going to YouTube. So from a um, computing architecture, like computing nodes, architecture view, if you're doing this on OpenBSD and uh, demo setup and my development setup are both just uh, one single bare metal machine with VMM enabled and a VM.conf that will uh, spin up four VMs, one for the web component, one for the XMPP, one for Vibri or JVB, <laughs> it's the Vibri on here, all the screenshots and uh, check OFO. Uh, each of the red boxes can be its own uh, bare metal machine or you put there them some, something digital ocean or whatever VPS provider, that doesn't matter. So there is no real uh, need that all four have to run within one, v, uh, within one bare metal machine steered by VMM or so. That's just a demo setup, but it's not a requirement per se. Okay? And on resources, it's rather uh, a, cheap a cheap state thingy. Uh, you can run it with under one gigabyte for RAM for web and XMPP. I recommend two just to have the reboots faster for read or other libraries. <laughs> and re um, relinking kernel and all this stuff just needs RAM. So OpenBSD is more, web, uh, more resource hungry here than the Jitsi subcomponents. It's a bit different on the Java side there. Your sizing really depends on what you are doing then. And I can only reference to uh, Jitsi tuning guides, whatever. Or you just try it out. What, what, when you, enough ROM is enough ROM. Uh, the, Jitsi components on a TCP IP basis or networking basis, that's all you need. So like in the introduction, I have been telling you like if you think about uh, 12 components or 14 with three connections each, that would be a lot of arrows. Arrows, with a lot of arrows. So that's all you need. The, the web client or the mobile client that does, is under the hood, it's the same JavaScript uh, thingy. So it's just requesting web assets and Bosch, that's a bi-directional bi uh, synchronous HTTP stream uh, on topic web sockets later on. And the actual video um, web RTC streaming goes uh, as a second request. So from client to your server infrastructure, you only have two connections. And all the internal stuff in terms of communication that is needed is also uh, XMPP publish and subscribe model. So all the components publish into XMPP server in Brosity. And the Tchaikovsky server is also 
calling uh, this data, so it's subscribing to those published. So it knows, okay, I have this and that many uh, video bridges, I can assign to um, any upcoming video conferences, that's all. Uh, and as you uh, can see on the next slides, then the pf.con needed on each of those VMs is pretty short. So in the beginning, before you are really trying out, you think it's a complete mess, let's say a clusterfuck. <laughs> and in the end, it, it's, it comes out that it is really straightforward and easy. Um, yeah, I've um, been talking about that already. So uh, there are additional components, like on the upper left is now not the browser, but the Chipri uh, a recording streaming uh, instance. And for example, for scaling out, I'm using here two video bridges, uh, one Prosody server and one Tacofo. And the uh, bridges are just announcing, publishing their presence. I'm ready to, to rumble uh, to the Prosody server and the Focus server is pulling these possible uh, uh, resources. Okay. Oh, I was expecting that. Where's my mouse? The renderer is like, for this dynamic rendering, it's not being a really stable thing. Second. Or I will just uh, I will just skip that slide. It's not that important. I've been talking about that already, like uh, over here. So the the sequence in the work and the communication workflow is client talks to the engine X server. It gets the delivered the website where you can choose uh, an existing conference or you are setting up a new one. Pre-join you can pick your uh, nickname and all that, and um, also the client uh, publish, uh, yeah, gets a, a Bosch request via Prosody about, okay, I want to start a conference, the Tchaikovsky is uh, assigning the, uh, a free unallocated video bridge and then the whole thing is set up that's on that slide that didn't render inline. So that's the, let's say, the theory of the setup. And now for the actual installation um, of my um, development and uh, later on also the demo setup. So we need a 7.1 image. You do not necessarily have to run 7.2 or current. Um, so that's, that's okay. It should even work on 7.0. You only would have to uh, recompile the, the Java modules and that's not really, yeah, well, difficult. Given you have already a port make file, and we have that in the, in the repository. So creating the VM, uh, VM images, uh, creating a vm.conf I'm showing in a minute, in a second. Uh, host entries and DNS. Uh, and then install config and all that for Nginx, Prosody, Tchaikovsky, JVP, uh, and we're done. And that works. It can be done if you have a small machine like my development box is some HP microserver generation one, so these very nice little boxes, maximum four hours with a full Java Maven dependency, everything compiling, and having two or three copies. Easy. If you are having fast machines in a, in a pre-compiled package and whatever, one hour maximum. So to get the four VMs uh, up and running, we need uh, a little image, uh, QCOW2 in this case, and the main part in here. So this is copy-paste uh, stuff, but to point out, uh, run the initial let's say template creator uh, image with two gigabyte of RAM. Same thing again with reordering libraries and relinking kernel. And the other stuff is just run through default. You could do something without auto install and all that. Then stop that one. That's important because QCOW2. <laughs> 
And then you just copy over uh, this QCOW2 image and then uh, you add the following vm.con. So it's just setting a memory limit, referencing the disk, and you can just say, uh, give me a local interface that is up. And then vm.conf offers this uh, easy thing that you just use the first VM as a template, or any VM definition as a template, and then just say, okay, I want a second VM with a, a different disk image. So you do not have to repeat all the, all the stuff above. And those two doing the same, but changing the memory limit because Java, let's say this. And so the four QCOW images and that VM.conf that makes up our whole um, infrastructure we need uh, on commuting node terms and also already for uh, the needed networking between the VMs, the only part what I was skipping that a bit, line 11. Always think about IP forwarding, otherwise you are stuck. It happened. <laughs> More than once. Um, the one thing you need, so that's the typical IP addresses uh, you will have in a VMM. Uh, simple startup setup, the first one is getting uh, from the dot one slash 24 and then two, three, four. And the first VM is always the dot three in here. And I'm just using web, XMPP, Chekhovo, JVB for obvious reasons. And why we have a second entry for the, in the second line, um, I will come into later on. I hope that's in time. Now the timer is shown. Uh, and don't forget about it is in my name. It's not really needed that you have a local host name set, but if you're typing in the wrong stuff in the wrong VM, yeah, shit breaks. Yeah, so I was pointing out that one. So pfconf, um, I was proving the point that there is no hidden communication, especially no outbound communication. Everybody has a focus on what's incoming, what do I have to allow? But um, if you are blocking everything and then suddenly stuff tries to reach out to some hidden API lookup discovery service somewhere on the internet, block return lock. So you know that this is happening. And I can already tell, no, it does not, unless you are, yeah, well, really saying it should do. But uh, this way you can prove the point that there is no hidden communication happening without you allowing it. Uh, and for all the machines, uh, of course, uh, time DNS, and then for example, uh, especially for the package add, uh, you need to be able to reach out. If you are downloading all the dependency and make a local package add, that works as well. For the full operation, you do not have to have outbound, for one exception, I'm, I'm coming to uh, on a later slide where it is relevant, and you maybe want to have SSH access, or you do just VM CTL console. Um, on the VMM machine itself, so I was treating the VMM box as a default router, and also that all public uh, requests will get to the uh, IP address of the VMM. That one was a private address already, but if you are putting that one already exposed, it would work too. Uh, so for the client to um, Nginx, obviously you need 80 and 40, uh, 443 incoming. And for the video streaming, the UDP part, so that's redirected to the, uh, to the Vibri, uh, JVB. Um, then there's only the internal communication for um, the Jitsi components to XMPP port 5222. Uh, um, that's the publishing of their, of their health and presence. And um, the requests that are coming from the outside via engine X, you have to allow that from web to XMPP 5280, that's Bosch protocol, or web sockets that would use the same protocol. And if you have something um, in a completely different area, networking-wise, uh, you can do that to use, for example, profanity 
or any other XMPP admin ad hoc client to debug what's happening in with Jacofo. But that's hardcore. That's not operation. That is really deep down debugging for the setup itself. Uh, yeah, an out, outbound DNS wouldn't be bad. So that's for for all the v, uh, for the VMM. And on the Nginx uh, incoming side, for within the VM, of course, ADN 40, uh, 4, 4, 4, 43 again. And uh, outbound, uh, you need uh, XMPP going to um, uh, Prosody. Yeah, and as I already said, uh, the XMPP, Bosch, or WebSocket use both the same uh, port typically. Um, on the Prosody side, uh, naturally the, the outbound will become the inbound. So we need uh, 5222 and 5280 in here. And again, for admin purposes, if you want to and need to, for debugging stuff, then 5280. And 5347 is uh, XMPP native authentication, so you could check uh, if the other components, uh, for example, Tricofo, is able to authenticate uh, with the Prosody server. But it's not needed for daily operation. That's why it's noted debug, uh, debug here. Whoop. On the video bridge, you have to have outgoing, out, inbound is becoming outbound. So we have that and uh, from to uh, from everywhere to self, you know, need a port 10,000. 10, uh, on the scaling part, what you can do is uh, you um, can go vertically, like if you have a very big bare metal machine, and for Java reasons, you do not want to have uh, just one very big JVM, but multiple smaller ones. And those need their own uh, UDP port, of course. And then you can just um, expand this rule for 10,000 to 10,050 or how, how many you, you will need anyway. Um, the JVB itself for the, this last rule, on 8080 there's a REST API and that's usually only used at the moment for just on health, health status where any request uh, will return with HTTP 200. I'm up and running. And, help, and slash metrics will get you the Prometheus exporter number, so you can add that for your statistics monitoring, whatever. Tricofo is even easier. You only need 5 to 2 because uh, that's only internal communication between Tricofo and Prosody. And the monitoring port is different because they are, might assume that you want to have it all on one box, so it must run on a different port. But so far, this one is broken. Um, <laughs> he gave me a tip about a um, uh, startup option, but that's only for your Java bridge. So I don't know what's happening here. It's not working so far, and I had no time to look into it. Um, so that's for the networking. Next part is getting the software uh, on board. Uh, we need Prosody, and that has a dependency on unzip. And for cut and paste reasons, this with unzip dash dash, it won't ask you about uh, icon. Icon, yeah. So no questions asked. <laughs> Just hit it. And let me scroll over there. So there's a mod client proxy in there. Um, that's for authentication of, of Tricofo and the mod roast uh, uh, module two. Maybe we package that for uh, a port, but it's so easy to install and you don't, do not need to configure that uh, anymore uh, or any additional configuration in Brosity. So um, the one part you need to configure is that the authentication is actually proxied and the roster command is just a CLI command I'm showing on the next page. 
uh, or a later one. <laughs> um, so that's pretty easy. Yeah, we are going to configuration first. So that's two slides and that's already the full prosody configuration you need. It says shortened. I put, uh, I took out some lines that are default configuration more or less anyway. And the full configuration I've been using is within the GitHub repo under uh, testing dash config something. Um, but with 20 lines something, um, everything is there that you really need and to point out is uh, especially you need to uh, define HTTP interfaces. Either you put in your um, VM uh, IP address in here or just star and uh, colon colon for IPv6. Otherwise, Prosody in default will only bind to localhost and that doesn't work on a distributed setup. If you have everything on localhost, of course that do, does, but yeah. Uh, the modules enabled you really need is Bosch and PubSub. Uh, with the stuff I've already explained. I think that's pretty obvious. And then you have the aut authentication virtual host uh, with SSL setup. I'm coming to that in a, in a second. Uh, and what I didn't really find out, but it is needed, is this admins line in line eight, so that uh, those users, when they are joining, they are considered um, an admin or channel op or whatever on the prosody side. I'm unsure what they are really doing there and needing it, but it is needed, so it's in here. The next part is for the, uh, in a Jitsi web conference, you can have a, a little chat aside uh, that needs this component. It must, must be there and referenced with conference JTS. pips.de as a MOOC multi-user chat. And uh, then you have a component with a secret, which is more or less just how the Java video bridge will authenticate uh, itself uh, against Prosody. And they're moving on to a different authentication scheme, but uh, and this one is for, uh, for the focus, for the Tchaikovo, but they have changed it for Tchaikovo, but not yet for Java bridge, uh, for, for the Jitsi video bridge. Uh, so that might, uh, might be coming, so think about it if you are doing an upgrade and suddenly JVB is no, no longer authenticating, uh, then this could be the culprit because um, they change stuff. You are not getting a really usable change log. And then when you ask in the forum, hey, this doesn't work any longer, oh yeah, it's no longer a component. Period, not you must do this and that now, so it's, it's no longer a component, so, and you have to figure out what that means. And the internal authentication, um, coming to that in a bit too, that's uh, exactly the part uh, Tchaikovsky is running, and it's observing the Prosody channel about um, upcoming video bridges, and this is done with uh, this part of a component. So it's also a multi-user chat, but it's isolated from the actually uh, web conferences chat. Um, so we have a lot of uh, FQTNs in here, internal odd, uh, focus, JVB, conference. Do not do additional DNS entries for those. This is just virtual host style hosting within XMPP. So like uh, virtual hosting in mail servers um, or uh, virtual host Apache, whatever, vServer settings and all that. So do not do that. It's not needed and it might even break things. Um, focus was using, yeah, I was said that already. So we need some users. Um, we have a Prosody configuration, so let's, let's fire it up just with our, our, our CCTL, that's always nice. And then we have the JVB uh, user is already having a secret with this component uh, configuration. 
And the focus user is just getting a Prosody CTL register. Change underscore focus is the password here. And it also needs this mod roster command, uh, subscribe. And I'm not really sure what's that for. It is needed, so it's, it's here. Um, I had no time to um, do the research what they are really doing under the hood with that one. All right, certificates. Uh, everything can be secured with TLS uh, version 1.3. That's really nice. No bloody fallbacks into old school crypto, even the, by default, even the Java components everywhere, default 1.3, that's really nice. Um, the Nginx configuration in uh, in the GitHub repo is also like uh, one free only, especially so external and internally, it's all 1.3 locked in and it does work. So the only generating um, certificate we need is for the authentication uh, FQDN and that's called with this Prosody CTL and it's just more or less a wrapper about open SSL request. You know this dialog how many uh, key bits, country, department, and all that. It's pre-filled to more or less a useful, useful part that's working. And then there's one thing. Um, Java is not really relying or doing um, OpenSSL parts or libtls or whatever. So you could do an ETC SSL certs, uh, whatever you want to. It's, you will get, just get startup failures in Chekhovo and JVB. What you have to do is to create a, a so-called key store from those uh, public certificates you have just been generating. How you do that is written up here. Um, either you install JDK 11 on the Prosody machine or you copy over the CRT to one of the Chekhov or JVB machines and call this uh, key tool command as shown, it, it doesn't matter. The reference on how to use this store file is in the respective configuration I'm coming to in a second. What Jitsi Debian post inst is doing is something I'm completely against. That's the important note here. Do not fiddle around with the CA certs file. You are not patching Firefox CA certs too, huh? do you? <laughs> because um, the, the day will come and then you upgrade to, to 14 or 18 or whatever is coming and then suddenly your stuff will break. Because five years ago you added a certificate to CA certs and which is a key store too, by the way. Um, no, don't, just don't do it. Use a dedicated file, then you know what you are referencing and where you have to look to when it, uh, for example, uh, expires uh, as well. And you have to use a new one. So, Nginx, that package add is easy and the next one would be new. There's package at GC meet for all those uh, that are running current. What? 10 or five? No way. I have six. <laughs> Let's say that. Okay, um, in current we have um, already a package uh, for GC meet. You need to do um, um, a TLS setup or the, the browser part side will uh, won't work. Uh, the full one is in the repository as already said. And I have a bonus slide on how to backport from current to 7.1 for the Jitsi, Meet, Chekhovo, and JVB. Um, and the next configuration is pretty straightforward. You need a server name, obviously. That route is uh, filled with the package at Jitsi, Meet. So this is all should be always the same thing. You need SSI because the configuration is included. So the, for example, the web client, uh, the mobile client knows about this as well. Uh, oops, 
Those are um, the static parts, like especially all the JavaScript libraries, so get those. Um, the element uh, mobile clients are still referencing or fetching this uh, location, so that has to be alias. And this is the um, web conference uh, Bosch talk uh, requests that have to be pushed to, to Prosody. And this one is a little riddle. <laughs> you need it, especially to keep your log file a bit sane. Um, meet me later on, as okay, I can explain it because I'm running out of time. And like I said, the Let's Encrypt is uh, then to be included uh, and it's in the GitHub repo. So you have, can have that. Uh, for the, the client itself, um, this is all you need and not 150 lines, which is in the default config chase or 170, whatever. You need your domain and you have to reference how your mock uh, channel is called. Again, no DNS needed. And this is the Bosch URL without a scheme. So you could still say it's HTTP, but the browsers won't be happy about that. Uh, if you use, have to use a turn UDP or not, depends on how many not is, in, is involved. I cannot foresee that. Usually with false, you are good. But if not, try to do that. And you can have a welcome page or you're only pass, uh, giving out uh, URLs with um, a fixed conference name, or many of those. And you can have some configurations here, like no conference with phone, because this setup won't allow that anyway. And here's this one uh, exception I've been talking about. This could be passed to the server side, and they might have more or less a checkback, pingback with that, so you need outbound. Uh, for for free allowed. Checkofo itself, uh, the checkofo.conf is within the package. Like in the first line package, checkofo works. Uh, you have logging properties. It default is going syslog via daemon daemon out of RC. Here's your uh, reference to the checkofo keystore we have been talking about. Uh, you can do Java tuning via this one, so you do not have to fiddle with the actually uh, uh, with the actual startup script or something like that, where you want to have fine tuning with uh, any Java options you you might consider for tuning garbage collection log files of those. You, you can put those in Java sysprops. Uh, and check uh, for real hardcore debugging it. You can have it with uh, XMPP packet debugging lock. It's all already locking the properties, and you just have to enable it there. The Tricofo configuration internally, if you are looking at all the stuff, that's this flat properties uh, part. But for three years, they are trying to move to this new format. But that's not in many uh, how tos or whatever. So that's all you need uh, on that part. S, oh, let's focus. You have to use JVB brewery. That's a magic string. Do not do something else. It won't work. Um, and here you have either client or server with a capital C or S. That's an enum. But the reference in the XMPP connection must be client lowercase. Don't ask me why. And you have to disable SCTP. That doesn't work on OpenBSD. So there's the domain, and those are trusted domains, so you have to use your example.com in those two locations. And for startup, you have to use a, a flag with host, where this one is the, the connection from Tchaikovo to the uh, XMPP server. And you cannot use the IP address, you have to use the, domain, uh, the, the, the host name, the FQDN because it's used as a virtual host connection into Prosody itself. So don't mess around with IP addresses here. Syslog configuration and off you go. More or less exactly the same for JVB. Here's the key store again. 
Java op uh, operations, and here they have an additional part to configure for NAT. Um, this is the default, and the package is filling up that default as well. It has to be this splitted part, so it's etc and JVB. You cannot just use etc JVB; that doesn't work. And same here, especially. Yeah, timer. Thank you. <laughs> gotcha. Um, the nickname can be different for crap reasons in the log file when you have multiple bridges to use them, but JVB brewery is the magic string. SCTP again, and if you want to have your video streaming over TCP instead of UDP, good luck with the performance, but here it is to change it. The properties is have your local address and the public address, so the nut harvester knows how to do that, but do not do that with AWS because they are evil. <laughs> and the syslog configuration, and off you go. So pitfalls I've been already talking about. Use that startup ordering, especially Tchaikovo has to be running already before JVB comes, and both talking to XMPP. Um, I had all of those. Yeah, be patient. Health discovery can, took, uh, can take two minutes or something. Uh, I have a bonus slide with logging when something is ready to use. And if you're changing config.js, have a look out for syntax errors. Because there's no parser, so you will get funky stuff. So everybody, quickly join me on, where's my mouse? No, it's, wait. Where's my window? No, that's, that's only terminals. What? No, it's over here. Okay. Ah, there we go. Ah, brilliant, it works. So, and this setup was done on Friday on Misha's machines. Quick, quick call out to him. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> so that's uh, hosted on openst.amsterdam. I need, um, with talking about it, maybe two hours or something to do the setup, really only following the slides and the testing configuration from, from the GitHub repo. So that one is checked. Um, the ports are in the current tree. We might do a, a meta everything in one place. So coming, scaling out, we can talk about that uh, in the lunch break, if you really need that. Uh, SRTP is the next port to come. This is Java inline crypto, that's way faster. And Chibri is one of those things that run only on Linux for recording all the stuff. That's a longer story uh, too. And I won't do, ever do Chigasi because this is this pot style in over zip into your, some US nerds need that, but I'm not doing that. Um, QR to the, to the talk again. Thanks to OpenBC and Chitsi, naturally, my employer for countless hours fixing this shit. Aisha Temi, really a call out for uh, all the ports, packages, stuff, because that's black voodoo coming from over there. I do not understand. Mark Espy is here for the stream. And she helped really, really a lot to, to package this 
insanity. I mean, the insanity was done by me, but packaging that into some normalized format was a great thing. Of course, Misha, again, for the, the infrastructure. Uh, questions in the hallway, I'm not doing lunch, so don't be scared about that. And always the question, the presentation was done with uh, Quarto and again, the link to, uh, to the presentation and just to look into it, some, some bonus slides to, for some details. Thank you and questions is allowed. <laughs>